Epigenetic test number four. What's my biological age? In this video, we'll go through data for three epigenetic tests, Hannum, Dunedin Pace, and Horvath. And these data were generated using true diagnostic. So if you're interested in measuring your own epigenetic age, there'll be a true diagnostic discount link in the video's description. So a first question that we can ask is, how good are these tests? Now, in an earlier video, for each epigenetic test, I presented data for their correlations with chronological age and their associations with all-cause mortality risk. And if you missed that, that data will be in the right corner. In this video, we'll focus on my data, including what's good, but also what's bad. So let's start it off by taking a look at data for Hannum's epigenetic test. So Hannum's test is also known as Extrinsic Epigenetic Age Acceleration, or EEAA, and this is a marker of immune system aging. So for this most recent test in January of 2023, we can see that my Hannum epigenetic age was 38.79 years, which is 11 years younger than my chronological. Now note that this is only data for one test. How does this data for this one test compare with the th uh, previous three tests? And that's what we can see here. So for the first two tests, I was 12 years younger than my chronological. My worst data to date was on test number three, 10 years younger than my chronological for a four test average for Hannum's test of 38.3 years, which is 10 to 12 years younger than my chronological age. So this is relatively good news. All right, so next up, let's take a look at the next epigenetic test, Dunedin Pace. Now, Dunedin Pace stands for the pace of aging calculated from the epigenome. And Dunedin is the Dunedin study that these data were generated in. So the Dunedin is a city in New Zealand. So in the speedometer in front of us, we can see two values, 0.6 and 1.4. 0.6 would be the slowest epigenetic aging rate. And what that means is for that every one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by only 0.6 years. Conversely, the fastest epigenetic rate would be 1.4, which means for every one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by 1.4 years. So a faster epigenetic rate uh, relatively older biological age. So what's my data? For test number four, my Dunedin Pace value was 0.78, which means that for every one year of chronological age, I'm epigenetically aging based on this metric by only 0.78 years. Now I do have room for improvement as knowing that 0.6 is the lowest, so work in progress. Now, just like we did for Hannum, how does this test compare with the previous three tests? And that's what we can see here. So for test one and two, my Dunedin pace value was relatively the same as test number four with values of 0.8 and 0.82. And then my worst data was also for test number three for Dunedin pace as it was 0.89 going in the wrong direction relative to test one, two, and four. So, so collectively, these four tests yield a four test average of 0.82 for Dunedin pace. So for every one year of chronological age, 0.82 years of epigenetic aging. So then a next question that we can ask is, how do these data compare with the epigenetic leaderboard? So that is a real thing. And for those who missed it, uh, I just took a little bit of a snapshot here and I'll put a link in the video's description for people who may not have seen it. So True Diagnostic has ranked uh, people based on their epigenetic age using Dunedin Pace. And it includes more than uh, 1,750 people to date. And there's supposedly an update. I shouldn't say supposedly, I've been told there's an update coming on March, March 1st. So I'm Looking forward to, to that. Now, just as a quick sh snapshot too of the leader, the leaders on the leaderboard, we can see that we've got rankings on the left and then the person's name. So note that the rankings aren't sorted from one and down all the way to the 20 that were listed on the website. And I, we'll see why in a second. So then going forward, we've got chronological age, baseline Dunedin pace value, and then the percent improvement from baseline. Now note that the epigenetic or this epigenetic leaderboard was intended as a list for Dunedin pace improvement. So you can see that the gray column highlighted, the people on this list had the best improvement for their Dunedin pace relative to baseline. But a good thing about this, or a great thing about this uh, epigenetic leaderboard is that there's also the pace of aging over uh, with the average value over three tests. And we can sort it uh, based on that column too. So when I sort it based on the average of three tests, which I think is more relevant than looking at a percent improvement from baseline, even though that's important, don't get me wrong. I'm just more interested in what is the closest to the truth story and we can get there by looking at the average of many tests rather than the improvement from one test. So when I sort, sort it by that uh, uh, standard, we can see that Jamari and Richard, who was seventh in terms of his improvement from baseline, is actually first 
for his pace of aging average over three tests with an, uh, the needed pace value of 0.696. So he's aging about 0.7 years for every one year of chronological age. So remember that uh, my data was 0.82. My average four test average was uh, for donated pace was 0.82, which if it holds up on this epigenetic leaderboard based on, you know, knowing that they're going to update uh, in a few days, I may be in fifth place or somewhere around there uh, based on the slowest Dunedin pace. Remember, so when the Dunedin pace is uh, smaller, that's a slower epigenetic aging. And if it's a higher number, it's a faster epigenetic aging rate. So again, I'm very interested to see how the March 1st update uh, comes. And if I even make the rankings at all, maybe there are people, uh, many people below me who have a faster uh, average Dunedin pace. All right, so now for the bad news, which is my Horvath data. So Horvath's test, or more specifically, it's, which is more specifically known as Intrinsic Epigenetic Age Acceleration, or IEAA, is a marker of cell intrinsic aging. So for this most recent test, January of 2023, we can see that my Horvath epigenetic age was 54.81 years, which is five years older. You can see the red arrow going in the wrong direction. So how does this test compare with the previous three tests? And we can see a similar trend for all of my Horvath data. For test number one, six years older than my chronological age. Test number two, four years older. Test number three, my worst data, seven years older. To get a four test average for Horvath of 54.9 years, which is four to seven years older than my chronological age. So then the big question should be, how can I reduce Horvath's epigenetic age? And as we all know, or many may know on this channel, I track diet, I also track supplements. So with the next test, I'll have five data points, and then I can start looking for correlations to see what I can possibly do to improve my Horvath's uh, epigenetic age uh, value. But more specifically, I've been taking 300 milligrams per day of NMN with the goal of increasing NAD. So would, will that affect my Horvath epigenetic age or even the other epigenetic age tests? And we'll know uh, in March as I'm going to send blood for analysis for uh, epigenetic age on March 6th. Uh, and I'm also going to get a full blood panel to see uh, how everything else looks on the same day. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch with links that'll be in the video's description, including links for NAD quantification, uh, discount links for green tea, epigenetic testing as covered in this video, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other links for the discounts will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.